Brian, if you um, can make me like a, oh, it's recording. Oh, cool. Okay. That is cool. Awesome. Um, okay. I'll send, cool. it to you. I'll send it to you after me. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, I think I'm just going to jump into it. I, I just want to tell you a little bit about myself today, um, as well as a resource that I think is very uh, timely and relevant. Um, also, I do have the um, notes to, I have the whole slides that I can provide in the chat later if you just want to, you know, click around here and, um, uh, you know, use, uh, yeah, click around in the links that I have shared here. So let me make sure I hide this video of sorts. I know it's kind of weird to like not see yourself when you're doing a presentation. Okay, cool. Okay, hi everyone. So a little bit about me. I am uh, an entrepreneur, a podcaster, and I'm also a uh, an advocate for military families and mental health. Uh, that little description down there is for when I have this replay video that I'm going to add for people that I want to share it to. So a little background on me, I am a gold star daughter. And if you're hearing about that for the first time, it means that you had lost a family member while they were on active duty uh, in the military. And for me, that was my dad. He served in the eighties and nineties. And uh, he was about 18 years in when he uh, unexpectedly disappeared while uh, in service. His ship was the last ship was the USS Kitty Hawk going from Japan to South Korea. And they sent a search crew for him for three days and continued the investigation for three months and uh, never found anything. So that was over 20 years ago. And uh, you think that I would have some resentment toward the military. Uh, that is until I met my husband, who I met after his service. He is a veteran. And uh, today we actually work together in business. But prior to meeting him, I have been an online entrepreneur since 2010. Um, I could not do the uh, typical job route. I was fired from four jobs consecutively in my young 20s, despite having a bachelor's degree. And, uh, and so that propelled me to get into sales. And uh, today I am currently in my third business venture that I'm willing to tell you about. I've definitely made a lot of mistakes uh, to get to where I'm at today. Uh, I'm also a Cali girl. I, after the military, uh, we moved from Japan to San Diego, California, lived there for about 20 years. Um, and then met my husband there, actually. He came from Germany. Uh, once he transitioned out of the army, um, he stayed in Germany for a while and then moved to San Diego uh, to uh, expand his business. And uh, that's how we met. Um, he was actually referred to me as a client for my former business. And I promise you that doesn't happen all the time. I'm still married. <laughs> so there's that. But yeah, uh, he started coming over to the East Coast because of Synapse. Uh, Synapse was growing in Richmond, and he just really fell in love with the, the community here. And a Eventually, he came up to me and said, hey, like, do you want to move to the East Coast? And at that time, I, I think I was looking for something new. So I said, yeah, like, let's do it. And uh, we moved to Richmond first in 2018. And then um, in 2019, as Synapse started to expand in Virginia Beach, um, I remember the first time I came out, it was like February 2019. Uh, the moment I saw water, um, it brought me back to my childhood of always being near the beach, like in Japan and then living in San Diego. Uh, I don't know what it's like to be landlocked for longer than seven months. So as soon as I saw water, I was, we moved over here a month later. And so we've been li living in Virginia beach since for about two years now. And one of the new things that I did as I was trying to kind of reinvent myself being out here in the East coast was I got into podcasting in 2019. And so fast forward to today, I've uh, nearly published 400 episodes, podcast episodes collectively on um, the number of shows that I am fortunate to be hosting. So that's a little bit about my background. Um, I want to tell you what I do for a living, and I want to start by talking about um, just some stats here. This is actually recent stats that was released by the Blue Star Families Annual Military Family Lifestyle Survey, which you can look up right now at bluestarfam.org. Um, so here the survey says uh, that 60% of military families are currently experiencing stress due to their financial situation. In addition to that, 60% of military families reported overall happiness to be worse or much worse. And so what do we do? Well, our company, we like to offer hope and options for our career military families. Um, so that's my husband there to the left. That's Scott. Uh, that's me. I'm like basically half his size. And that's my dog in the middle. His name is Stugi, which is short for Stuttgart, Germany, which was the place that uh, Scott was stationed uh, when he was in Germany. Um, I like to jokingly call him my only child as well. He basically is. He's very spoiled. Um, he has a ton of toys all over in our living room. And I just give up on cleaning it up because when I put it in the box, he just pulls it back out. 
So I just have given up on that. Um, but anyway, our company is uh, US Bet Wealth. And basically what we do, we are actually uh, an award-winning business. We received best uh, startup of the year back in 2018 when we were formerly known as US Bet Life. And we had decided to rebrand since then. But what we do in regards to offering hope and options for our career military families is we uh, provide thought-provoking financial education and flexible financial solutions for our military families. And if that doesn't make any sense, uh, if you look at the right here, uh, we actually, Scott actually released a book, Veteran Wealth Secrets, back on Veterans Day last year. And um, it's already become an Amazon bestseller. It's been ranked number one in a number of financial categories on Amazon. And you can get it today. You can get the first, uh, actually not the first chapter or the second or the third, but you get actually, you get, I was, I was okay, I totally like ruined how I was gonna say that, but let me say it again. Um, you can actually get the first three chapters uh, for free by visiting veteranwealthsecrets.com and actually download the PDF version to get an idea about um, you know, our company philosophies and why we do uh, what we do. Um, career military families are really important to us, uh, considering that I was part of a career military family. And um, a lot of career military families, they generally do well uh, financially, but that transition um, out of the military is always a complicated time. And so, you know, we just have a passion to, you know, provide information on how to attain a sense of autonomy and financial control in uh, post-military life. Um, so that's a little bit what I do for a living. Uh, as a podcast, though, I do host an award-winning podcast show called Holding Down the Fort here to the left. Uh, this is really the advocacy I do for military families. Um, I host the show to promote education, knowledge, and resources to um, our military families so that they can continue to have confident and informed decisions for themselves and their families. Um, so it's been a ton of fun doing that. I, I know in season four right now, we're probably going to be nearing uh, 100 episodes. Uh, and so it's just been a joy to do that and learn about the military families uh, today the and, and the movers and shakers who are supporting the military community. Um, if you are looking for other shows, uh, I do host another show called the Filipino American Woman Project. Very often I get asked, what are you? And I was like, here you go, I'm Filipino American. And uh, what we do, this is actually a passion project of mine where uh, I bring on other people such as myself, American women of Filipino descent to talk about that hyphen. Uh, what does it mean to be Filipino and American? Because a little cultural lesson here, um, in the Philippines, we, are, uh, we typically have what we call the collectivist mindset, where you're always thinking about what do we want to do? What do we want? Where in America, it's very individualistic of what do I want to do? What do I want? And so, you know, as a community, we come together to talk about those uh, struggles. And the third one, this is actually good for all of you if you're looking for more tips on how to be a better entrepreneur or a more thoughtful entrepreneur. Uh, I actually just started joining the show. Uh, my debut was episode 500. And uh, in that episode, um, or, or pretty much what I do on the show is I interview entrepreneurs anywhere from six figures and up to, you know, share their tips and tricks on uh, what, you know, how they thrive as an entrepreneur. And uh, the most interesting stories I have found or that I have interviewed so far are those who had to make that pivot. Uh, during the pandemic. So these are just some shows. If you are a, a podcast binger or you're looking for some shows to look into, I uh, highly recommend uh, these um, just because, you know, because I host them. <laughs> uh, okay, so now I want to get into why do I do what I do? Uh, there's two reasons why I do what I do, in case you're wondering. One, I want to honor my father's ultimate sacrifice uh, to our country, uh, as well as my mother's tremendous resilience by serving our military community. Uh, my mom uh, had to raise three kids under 11 uh, when we lost dad. And uh, one of the biggest problems, the biggest stressors we had in our family growing up was money. Uh, there was a point, I, I found this out later uh, in life as I started to make money, that she had maxed out 11 credit cards, you know, all of that just to provide for us. Um, and so it's it's really near and dear to my heart to uh, serve our military community and particularly our families who uh, typically don't really get the spotlight, I think, in our military community. The second thing, oh, a fun fact, if you look at the bottom right, that's my family there. That's my mom laughing to the left, my dad when he was around in the middle, my brother hugging him, and uh, my and that's myself, my, my face to the very right. You can tell I'm very happy to be in that photo. Um, and you can't see this, but my sister is actually in the crib uh, at the bottom there. So that's my little family, um, probably the happiest photo I have um, at this point in my life. 
Uh, the second thing is um, in regards to podcasting, my, my deepest desire is to find common ground through conversation and storytelling uh, to foster communication or to foster com connection, community and collaboration. Uh, I do believe that we are more alike than we are different. And in a society that uh, uses so much divisive rhetoric today, um, I just like to believe if I can find common, uh, common ground um, through one conversation at the time, um, I think I can change you know, the world uh, by having one conversation at a time to find that common ground. So it's really important to me. And of course, for the business side, it's been very fruitful for us to, you know, find people, find people who share like the same values and uh, even want to work together. Um, so that's a little bit about my background. If you want to learn more about me, you can check out my website, jenamoscreates.com and see if there's any collaboration opportunities there. Uh, but now that I got that out of, way, out of the way, I really want to share an important resource that's um, really near and dear to my heart. So I already mentioned to all of you that I am an entrepreneur and a podcaster and an advocate for military families, but I'm also an advocate for mental health. And um, this is a little hard for me to bring up, so just bear with me. Um, the, the story that I want to share is uh, just recently, um, one of my nearest, dearest friends, one of my best friends uh, attempted to take her life. And she had COVID for a couple weeks now. And I think uh, what they were saying at the ER, fortunately, she did not succeed. So thank God for that. And she's being watched over by her family and friends, um, you know, just people checking in with her at this point. And she's just kind of slowed down and started resting and, and, and everything and just trying to uh, recover. But um, I bring that up because the reason why she had attempted, um, other than the fact that the um, ER had, the people at the ER had mentioned that um, part of a COVID symptom is uh, gaining inflammation in your brain. Um, and, and so what that does is it, they say supposedly that heightens uh, mental health um, mental health illnesses and she had already, or mental health issues, sorry, and she had already had um, anxiety and insomnia. And so something about COVID probably heightened her um, issues. And, um, and so I guess she just thought that the best thing to do was to uh, take her life. But also part of the reason why I think she felt compelled to doing that is because she felt like she was letting everyone down. She felt like she wasn't doing enough. Uh, she felt like she was becoming a burden to people. And I think she thought that things would be better if she took her life. And, and I wish she told me that, you know, I wish that, I wish that she didn't feel like a burden um, and that she was, you know, she sought out help and she told me that she wasn't okay. And the reality is we tell people that, um, we tell people like, hey, get help, you should get help. But in all honesty, uh, people don't know how to ask for help, you know, and I, I think part of it is to start normalizing the conversation that it's okay to not be okay. And it's okay to say that. And you may not know how to say it, you may not know how to ask for help, but sometimes it's just about saying it, like saying it in the most raw, um, you know, imperfect way. Uh, because the reality is, if you think you're a burden, there are actually people who want to help you, you know? So um, anyway, my voice is a little shaky. Let me collect myself. Okay. So anyway, uh, let me go ahead and move ahead. And I want to share a resource with all of you. So I don't get paid to talk about this. This is just something that I have uh, volunteered a lot of my time into and has actually helped me uh, be a better communicator, um, a better active listener, um, and also just really good for my mental health overall to feel like I have a safe space to talk about anything and everything. Everything. So Seven Cups is a free platform where you could talk to volunteer listeners who've been trained to just do active listening. You know, if you're just looking for that space to open up, sometimes right now, like I, I do believe that, um, you know, with all the divisive rhetoric we have out there, as well as just kind of this enforced um you know, thing to be be at home and to keep to ourselves. Um, sometimes it's hard to open up to the people that we love the most or that we trust the most. And so I really want to share this resource for anyone that is looking for a safe space to really talk what they really want to talk about um, without feeling judged, uh, without feeling, um, you know, yeah, without feeling judged and feeling like they're going to be shamed for what they're thinking about. Um, when you get when you go on the site, uh, this is one of the first things you'll see. So they say you are entering a safe space, a safe place full of caring people. Anytime you're lonely or struggling, you can talk to someone or join a group support chat to get support from the community. 
Um, the cool thing about this is when you create an account, you actually get a two for one deal. Uh, you can sign up to be a member as well as a, a, as a listener. So what's the difference? Uh, a member is someone uh, who is just looking for someone to, to talk to, someone that is just looking for um, someone to have a, a caring ear to listen to you and everything. Um, if you love that so much and you want to give back, you could actually switch over to the listener side and return the favor. You know, be there for people who are looking for that listening ear, looking for someone to, you know, value validate them in their current situation. Um, and I can't stress enough that this is all free and uh, you can create one account and get both member and listener uh, options in there. Also, when you do get into the account, you can switch back and forth. So some days, if you want to just have someone listen to you, you can uh, switch to be a member and do that. Uh, or if you want to listen to other people, listen to other uh, you know, strangers in a sense, you can switch to the listener account. But for today's conversation, I really want to focus on you as the individual and your needs and your, your need to feel you know, heard, seen, and validated. So we're going to focus on the membership side today. Um, so just a little bit more about the membership side. I'm really going to stress more about the online chat. Uh, there are other features on there. There are like free um, kind of like self-care programs that you could sort of like walk yourself through. Um, you know, it's, it's a really awesome free platform and it's all completely anonymous. But this is a place where, um, you know, even though also it says here on the top right that there are uh, 180 professional therapists, but most people don't come here for the therapist. They come to just be listened to. Um, they have over 300,000 trained listeners worldwide. Um, I'm personally one of them. I actually interned with them and graduated honors. <laughs> so um, I haven't been to school in a while, so I, it makes me feel good if I can get honors in anything. Um, and, you know, Seven Cups as a whole has helped over 25, uh, 25 million people worldwide. Uh, but this is really just a good platform for if you just need someone to talk to. Um, it is mobile friendly, but I actually prefer a desktop because I, I feel like I can type faster and stuff like that. But anyway, um, what it is, is that you have trained volunteer listeners who are available 24-7 to give you emotional support over online chat. You can do it all completely anonymous, including the listener. The listener is anonymous as well. And so I think it really gives you that safe space to open up and talk about whatever you want. And, um, and so that's what I love the most about it. I do want to preface by saying that this does not replace professional therapy. I still believe that professional therapy is very important so much that I myself am actively in couples counseling and I have a therapist for myself. Um, it's, it is very important to seek that help out, but I, I kind of like to consider seven cups as like the maintenance to my mental health. Like whatever I, you know, whatever I get from my therapy, um, I can sort of uh, implement that or practice that um, or maintain that in, in a space such as seven cups. But if you do want to learn more about this platform and learn about get the overview there's a click here button there that I'll, I'll provide later in the show notes um so why does seven cups work i mean i know people um people think that when you think about mental health and therapy i think uh one of the barriers is uh, a financial uh cost or a financial investment people think that I don't have the money to, um, you know, afford a therapist. Um, and that's okay, but you don't have to start there. Um, you know, really the reason why Seven Cups works is because they've honed in on a, a, an important truth uh, for all human beings, which is that, you know, being heard is an important part of being human. You know, sometimes before seeking out help, sometimes we just need to feel heard. You know, sometimes we just need a listening ear to feel like, like to, to feel like we can open up unapologetically and, and be, um, you know, be validated for what is going on um, in our mind. So something important to think about, and that's what Seven Cups really thrives on, is really specializing and training uh, volunteers on how to be better active listeners. So now you're probably asking, okay, well, what can I talk about on here? Uh, there's a couple of there's a couple of options, many options, many topics that you can get into. Um, so this is what the chat platform looks like. So uh, this is actually the bot Noni. So Noni, you, you usually start off with Noni, and Noni is a you know it's a bot, it's AI, but it can prompt you to talk about certain topics. And so there's a ton here, a ton of examples such as financial stress, getting unstuck, loneliness, disabilities, exercise, motivation, forgiveness, grief, etc. You name it. Um, you could even just chat with Noni um, and Noni can prompt you to kind of uh, pull out of you what you really uh, want to talk about. But that's uh, that's a ton of fun, a great way, a great place to get started. Um, but if you are ready to talk to a listener, if you look here at the bottom left with that big fat red arrow, you could just select live chat with a free listener. And if you look above that arrow, uh, arrow and you see a uh, the what do you call it? The purple square box. Um, this is uh, you could see that I have blocked 
blocked out some of the listeners that I talk to. <laughs> so just some ideas for you. I like to talk to um, listeners on here about relationships, about finance, about business, and just about kind of anything in general. Like I, uh, like you're not limited to just talking to one listener. You can talk to a number of listeners um, at once. And so when you are ready to chat with a listener, this is usually what pops up. Um, they either ask if you want to talk to a listener for free or a therapist. And I highly recommend the listener, of course, because that's what we're focused on today. Um, I have used the therapy here. It's been great. Uh, one thing I like about having a therapist on here is it's kind of like having an interactive diary. It's like you're going to journal anyway, but why not, you know, interact with a therapist and get their thoughts and their observations on uh, what you're journaling about. But you can have that same experience or similar experience as well, just talking to a listener. Um, some best practices when you're on this platform, uh, I highly recommend that you check out the listener's profile to see if it's someone you want to talk to. Um, be specific with what you want to talk about with the listener. Don't just like pop up and be like, oh, I'm just on here to be on here. Although, you know, that's still okay, but I think it's helpful to be specific. And most of all, to be responsible, respectful, and to give grace to the listeners on here. Keep in mind, again, that these are not licensed professionals. These are volunteers, such as myself, um, all around the world who are just doing their best to be the best caring listener they can be for you. Um, so this is a little bit about what a profile looks like. I just kind of screenshot this from one of my uh, listeners. Um, one way when you look at their profile to see if they're a good fit for you is to look at the categories that they cover. Uh, so if you look at that big red arrow, I know you can't really see the, the, the text there, but um, some categories are some categories that are listed that this uh, listener uh, specializes in or is willing to talk about. Uh, for example, would be depression, managing emotions, work stress, bullying, sleeping well, breakups, fam uh, family stress, et cetera. And if you see a star next to that category, it means that they have a lived experience. Um, sometimes, it's sometimes it's so much better to talk to someone with a lived experience versus a licensed professional. I know for myself, for example, as a, a fatherless daughter, um, I was able to be a part of a peer group with other fatherless daughters um, to talk about the loss of, of our dads and stuff like that. And I find that very uh, fruitful and therapeutic for myself. And that's really what this platform provides is really just someone um, who has a shared experience with you that, um, that is willing to talk to you. Um, you could also be very specific. Like once you get comfortable on here, you could actually narrow down the type of listeners you talk to. You can narrow, narrow them down by age, country, gender, uh, topic, language. Um, so there's just a lot of ways to find the listener that's right for you as you start to get comfortable on here. Um, another tip I want to share is to uh, pick a listener that has been, that is very experienced on here. Um, so what this is, is that this is sort of like all the levels of the listeners and starting from the top left and working your way down, this is pretty much every level that they upgrade to as they uh, gain more experience on this platform. And if you look at the right, uh, the right column, you'll see that these are the people or these are the types of levels I most recommend, because remember, like these are volunteers you know, people are doing this on their spare time. They're not licensed professionals. So why not, you know, be able to talk to someone who's experienced on here and, um, you know, is experienced in providing uh, active listening and has uh, racked up on reviews and, you know, what have you. So that's what I recommend when you get on here and you start to get pickier is to, you know, find that active listener um, that is experienced. Um, and so you can actually look at people's profile and see their experience level on uh, where their name is at. Um, so this one here is an explorer, which if you ask me, I probably wouldn't go with them because they're in the left column. <laughs> I'd probably try to go, uh, you know, with a higher, higher level. Um, okay, so in wrapping up here, I just want to say, like, you know, this psychologist, uh, Glenn Moriarty, Glenn Moriarty started this because he knew that there was a great power in just listening. Uh, but he knew that not everyone had someone to talk to. So, you know, thanks to Seven Cups, uh, no matter who you are and what you're going through, this is a great resource where you could be heard and cared for. Um, and you could even practice being a better actor. Did we lose her? I lost her. Oh, am I still here? Back, you're back. She's back. Oh, am I back? Oh, how long was I gone? Oh, that's Five awful. Seconds. Five seconds? Okay, cool. So I, I was just saying in wrapping, in wrapping, no matter who you are and what you're going through, um, this is one of many uh, 
programs or options out there where you can feel seen, heard, and validated. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I also just want to say, like, thank you, everyone, so much for your time. And if you want to learn more about this and want to get my own personal testimonial and other tips and tricks to take advantage of this free resource, uh, feel free to message me. But other than that, that's my presentation. And thank you all so much for listening. And I'm happy to take any questions. This was awesome, Jen. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, so professionally done, um, so thorough, and what a cool organization. So thank you for sharing all this. Uh, I don't have any specific questions, but I'd love to just hear if anybody else has any questions or comments. Um, so Jen, um, the, the first question, which is a little obvious, have you reached out to them about a 007? A double. Well, they are, uh, that's so funny. You know, I actually tried to reach out to like the founder, but like he's so unaccessible. And I think that's sort of like, you know, they're being in theme of the whole uh, anonymity thing. It's like they don't want to be found in a sense. Um, and so uh, although I did find him on YouTube, but no, I haven't I haven't like reached out and considered that. But that's a good option. That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I, I mean, the, the more awareness for this, um, I mean, the, the needs definitely there. You know, I'm sure we all have our own thoughts and, and reasons to support that. Like, for example, I alone, uh, every time I've made a phone call to try and get in with a psychiatrist, it's uh, like months wait. It's it's ridiculous. Um, yeah. So I, I was just recently saying, in fact, you know, there's all this awareness of uh, self-care and and speaking up mm -hmm. and, and whatnot, but the help isn't there if you need it <laughs> so right. it's like ah um but so i think this is wonderful and then i wondered about were there like keywords that you're trained like is what's the training period like like are there keywords that, that wants to listen for how does that work oh so like to become an uh to become a listener on the listener. platform uh, they do have an internship program that goes anywhere from eight to 12 weeks. Um, actually, a lot of people who want to pursue the therapy uh, field or the, that kind of field, um, the, a lot of them are on here and, uh, you know, using this as a internship to gain credits for school. But uh, I'm one of those uh, civilians or just regular people that was like, I just want to learn it because, you know, I'm a podcaster, I network, like I could always get better at communicating with people. And I think the one trick uh, that I have gained uh, from this internship program is to just learn to ask better questions, you know, to, to not just ask people, how are you doing, but to make sure you ask them, how are you really doing in a space that they feel comfortable saying that, right? It's like very often we just say, hey, how's it going? And of course, everyone's going to like brush it off like, oh, it's going, right? But like, if you can get someone in a safe space to actually, you know, answer that question, you know, you'll be surprised. But I think the question part is the most important thing, like knowing how to ask better questions. Um, how, how have, like, have you referred any of your veteran clients uh, to Seven Cups by any chance? Like, have you gotten any feedback on that? You know, I, I promote it everywhere, to be quite honest. It's like, it's on my website. I always like push it out there. And I don't, I don't like to follow up with people on that end because, you know, one, it's not like I'm getting paid to talk about it, but uh, two, it's up to them. You know what I mean? Like this is their own like personal journey. Um, and it's up to them. Like, you know, some people, some people genuinely feel ashamed to ask for help, like genuinely you know, and, um, and I know that a lot in our veteran community as well. Uh, I'm married to one, <laughs> you know, and so it's, it's hard. It, it generally is hard. And so if they can just kind of secretly get help, like sometimes that's better for them than anything. So, um, I don't, I don't send it to them and follow up later and say, Hey, did you use seven cups? You know, um, I actually give them a number of resources to reach out to, um, actually a resource for veterans in case anyone is interested. And I'll put it in the chat here. And I told you about this, Megan is, um, the Cohen veterans network which provides uh, free to affordable uh, co uh, counseling to our veterans and uh, post 9-11 veterans and families. So um, it's great. Like, that's all I have to say about that. I actually have an interview coming out about, I just interviewed them recently and it's gonna come out this Friday uh, through Holding Down the Fort. Uh, but they have this whole fun theme right now about military couples and lessons in love because it's the month of, of love. But anyway, does that answer your question? Okay. It does. Um, so I, cause I know that you, you are a mental health advocate. So I was just curious, you know, about that. Um, I recently joined a, uh, veteran Bible study group and it dawned on me. I, I don't think I'm allowed to be a member anymore now because I, I now I'm talking on it, <laughs> but, and you're not supposed to, but, uh, um, it, it dawned on me that 
even those that haven't like physically like been in some type of uh, commotion, so to speak, mm -hmm. while serving have PTSD. Right. So like, I, I want to raise the point that uh, being in the service alone uh, is, is like, is causing PTSD, which means uh, I don't believe our, our uh, service members are getting treated fairly. Um, and, and so I just kind of wanted to make that point, especially while this is being recorded, um, that it's definitely something that I think we need to look into because, you know, we've seen the, and we're hearing about the, the suicide statistics, um, you know, they are heroes, like some of the way that folks are treated sure wouldn't fly in the workforce. Like why does it in the military? And uh, I'm willing to bet that that has plays a big role in why someone's wanting to be secretive, you know, not make a big deal or admit that that they need help. So um, I'm yeah. just, I think it's so awesome that that, you know, you you bring these conversations up. Yeah, they're important. And part of my why of where it comes from is um my sister and I are starting to learn more about my dad's story. And um, he, it turns out that he had a history of uh, suicidal ideation and depression. Um, and we are sort of gathering this theory that he may have taken his life. Uh, he may have jumped off ship. Um, and so, and, and when, for myself, I've been, di I've been diagnosed with mild depression um, in the recent years. I mean, it turns out I always had it. I was just like, I just didn't get diagnosed officially. And then I denied it for a while. And then I started to see the symptoms. I'm like, oh, okay, I really do have it, you know? But, um, you know, it's, it, it, it's, if not for you, do it for the generations after you. Do it for your kids, do it for their kids. Because, you know, PTSD, depression, it's... Um, it gets handed down, you know, like families, generations inherit it. And if we could be the ones to acknowledge that mental health is real and important, it's just as important as your physical health, then maybe we can break that cycle of, and we could break that stigma and, um, you know, hopefully have more, um, you know, healthier, healthier people uh, moving forward, I think. So. Jen, I, I just have a couple quick questions. First of all, um, is there an age restriction restriction on seven cups? Could teenagers no. log into it or? Yes, okay. they can. Yeah, actually, that's really cool. That there's actually a whole section just for youth. Um, so uh, you can, I think, you, I don't know if you can list. I think you can list your birthday, but there there are group chats in there where it's specifically just for youth. Yeah. Okay. Um, so. and, and you know, are there uh, in the training that they provide or anything? Are there um, I don't know, red flags, I guess is the best way to put it, that if you're a listener and things are starting to be said in a chat that um, you can either alert somebody or you, or you can say, hey, I think you need to take this course of action or, or something along those lines. Yes. Yeah. First of all, there is uh, checks and balances on the platform. So let's say, for example, um, like uh, you're talking to a listener that you just feel like is harassing you, you can report them. Um, if you are in a position, if you are a listener and uh, you know that someone needs more help, like they start to talk about suicidal ideation, they do train you on how to uh, refer out and how to, how to have them uh, seek out other resources. So that's all in there because of course, in an anonymous platform, it's very easy to throw around those words. Like, oh, I'm going to, you know, I don't want to say it while it's recording, but you know, you know, the word, like the phrases to just kind of hint at people that you want to attempt, you know what I mean? And so we don't want to put listeners in that situation and you shouldn't put yourself in that situation. And so they do have uh, the, the training and the verbiage to encourage you to refer that person um, or at least give them warning that you're not comfortable having that discussion. Because I, I work with um, a no, number of addiction and recovery um, groups, and I, I don't know if you guys are aware, but um, for the first time in 10 years, Virginia has seen an increase in opioid deaths. Mm. Um, and, and it's because of the, the pandemic, and it's because of all the things going on around the pandemic. Um, you know, two of my groups have wonderful success rates um, with recovery and making sure that people go long time without getting back to things but uh, you know um the, uh, one of my groups really got hit bad they had four people die in two weeks that mm -hmm. had been sober for over three years um you know because of things that are impacted by the pandemic so um you know i, I will definitely share this resource with them so thank you for sharing it yeah absolutely i just um i know that there's a uh, 
there, people are having more problems today than they're letting on. And um, that's why I like to just put it out there and hint at people and, and hopefully they'll seek it out themselves. But I at least feel like I know I did my part to let people know that, um, you know, if you can't afford uh, services right now, like there's a platform like this that's anonymous and free. And the chat is just one of many features that the platform provides. But I like to focus on that specifically because, like I said, some people just need someone to talk to right now. And they don't feel safe enough to do it with the closest people that even live with them. So if we could provide a place for them to have that outlet, um, then I think I think hopefully we've saved one more person, you know? So yeah, other than that, any other questions? <laughs> hey, Jenna, thank you for your time and all this great stuff. Um, I'd like to put you in touch with my wife. Uh, not only is she a Filipina American, uh, she also <laughs> never knew her Filipino father, uh, wow. but she's a she's a health coach. She's a certified health coach, and uh, you know the things you list are not in her wheelhouse. And she always wants to partner up with people that she can refer her clients to, uh, to you know, to get the kind of of, of, of uh, assistance they need. So I'm going to put the two of you guys in touch, and maybe you can uh, uh, you know synergize or or uh, or, uh, you know, cross or for each other. Yeah, please. Um, I feel like with other Filipino women, we just like click instantly. There's just that kind of like knowing like, oh, I know, like I already know. <laughs> yeah, I could always yeah, tell. No, I'd be happy to connect. <laughs> yeah, just talking hey, to you, I can tell you guys are oh. from the same cloth. <laughs> yes, 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 for sure. No, thank you yeah. for that. I look forward to meeting her. Yeah, and, and Renee, uh, thanks again for, for your conversation today. Uh, uh, don't forget to chat with me about that, that uh, drone and agriculture program you got. Definitely will. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Cool. Well, that's it, if, unless anyone else has any other questions. Nope. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Um, I guess, I don't know who's recording this, but if someone wants to stop recording. I then... will stop the recording. <laughs>